Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox TV and today we're actually doing another idea which one of you guys commented which has been on my list for quite a while to do and that is replacing the sun with the crab pulsar. So I don't really know much about it other than it's a pulsar so yeah a very very tiny little object which should be here somewhere but before we get started guys just a massive thank you as always because yeah since last video we've gone up another like 12 or something subscribers so yeah that is that's just crazy and i just cannot thank you guys enough yeah i really really think we can literally get like 100 subs a month now like i really think like we're doing it like this isn't easy now so yeah pretty cool stuff but yeah our target is let's see if we can get 1300 before november i think we've got it in the bag but yeah let's see if we can do that because that'd be cool but anyways Crab Pulsar. So this thing's got the mass of 1.4 suns, and it's only 11.5 kilometers in radius. So, yeah, this guy is pretty small. So if you want a quick comparison with um, the um, planets and stuff here. So, yeah, it is going to be very small. So here's Earth, as we can see here, and the Crab Pulsar uh, is, like, really small. You can't really see it, but let's just let's actually just lock onto Earth, and we can add it in easier. So the Crab Pulsar, we're going to get you here. So the tiny little thing is so, so, so small, you literally can't even see it when I, like, you can just probably just about make out where it is, but I don't even know where it is. Yeah, but it's, it's very, very small. Let's just put it that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to, there we go, we're going to go back to the sun here. We're going to um, slow down time as well. And yeah, many thanks to the person who commented this. I know it's been a while since it probably was commented, but yeah, it's been on my list of things to do. So yeah, apologies about that. But anyways, let's put it in here. Let's put it right in the middle, but so around there somewhere. So yeah, that's pretty much in the middle. So put the pulsar there. Delete the sun. Now we'll do this two ways. We'll do it so we we we'll just leave it like that and we won't press all to orbit. Then we will do it again and we will press all to orbit. So everything's probably going to fall towards the crab pulsar, but yeah, that's not good. But then afterwards we'll reload the simulation and put it somewhere else just because yeah reasons. Let's do it. So play. Let's see what is going to happen here. So either they're going to fly away or they're going to get pulled in. So let's see what's going to happen here. So they're going to orbit around. Okay, so no, 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 the orbits are working actually. So there you go. So it's mostly the same. It's just the inner solar system is a little mucked up. So how is this going to, or how is this going to affect the planet? So Mercury, the closest object, is barely receiving much light at all. And let me put my graphics back. So remember I learned them from last episode. So... Let's put the graphics quality and high again. So as you can see there, the quality just got better. So there we go. That's looking better. So where is this tiny little pulsar? So if you look very carefully, it is here. So look, this is this is so small and cute. Look, <laughs> this thing is really tiny. So let's go into radius mode here, just so we can see. So we've got Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Planet Nine, Earth, Venus, Mars, Mercury. Then we've got to go past all the little dwarf planets down here. And there's the crab pulsar. So it's a little bit bigger than Mr. Spock, the asteroid. So that's pretty crazy. This thing is like the size of a mountain. Like this, that's just how small this is. And the next object up is Chiron, Charlico, and a bunch of other um, asteroid belt objects. Then we've got dwarf planets here. And then we've got the bigger dwarf planets like Sedna, Pluto, Eris, and all that. Then we've got Mercury, and then the planets pretty much. And that lovely looking Uranus, I might add as well. That nice light blue, it just looks so much better than the regular Uranus. I, I, I love this, <laughs> this colour. And it's just complete darkness out here as well, so let's check up. Look at how nice, nicely coloured that is. Like, search up a picture of the real Uranus, you'll get a colour like that. Like, I'm really proud of that custom Uranus. Right, so here's Venus. So, also receiving daylight, or is that just because it has an atmosphere? Let's turn it off. Okay, so yeah, Venus is receiving daylight from this little pulsar. So, it, Venus is just about manageable. We could live here. As you can see, 27 degrees, we could colonize this and live here. So, yeah, we could, like, if you want me to do, like, another episode of this, guys, we could colonize the objects um, from their distance around the crab pulsar. So, yeah, do you want me to do a part two where I attempt to colonize these objects? Because that, that could be pretty interesting around the pulsar. Because it looks like Venus, without us even changing the atmosphere, we could live here. So, you know, if we just added some water on and stuff, made the... Um, Surface pressure less, and we could probably live there, so that's pretty cool. Right, Earth, let's go to you next. So, here we go. So, 10 degrees, but how long will that last? Is it going to cool down? So, 10.3, yeah, uh, there's no way Earth's going to survive. It's going to cool down. There's surely it will. So, let's get a good view of it here. So, 5 degrees. Ah, oh, poor Earth's cooling down. That's not good. So, let's speed up time here, and we're just going to watch as it 
this temperature just cools down into nothingness. And it looks like the pulsar's in a binary orbit with Venus, I want to say. Um, okay. Well, you can do that. Yeah, it looks like in a binary orbit with Venus. So, how luminous is this? So, it's only... So, it's literally 0.0... or 0.006% of the sun. So, yeah, this, this is nothing compared to the sun in luminosity. But, in mass, it's bigger. So, that's pretty crazy. And remember, these guys spin very fast. If we look here, this thing rotates in 37 seconds. So, if we slow down time here... Put it to about, okay, this is one hour. Let's just put it to about one minute of real life. Or let's just actually put it to one second of real life. So this is pretty much real time here. So let's speed up a little bit more. Okay, so this is about real time, 1.2 or 1.5 seconds. Look how fast this thing spins. This is what it would actually look like if we were just standing looking at it. Like, it only takes 30 seconds for the whole thing to turn around. So if we split it up to about 10 seconds... Or 30 seconds. It, look how quick it spins. Like these things, these things are pretty cool and they're crazy. So, yeah, there's that. So Mercury, how, how hot are you? Are you cooling down? So Mercury's at minus 124. So that's more like a dwarf ice planet now. Venus minus. Okay, so no, we would need to change Venus around. So my, Venus is at minus 45 now. So that's probably still be the hottest planet. Where's Earth? So Earth's out here, minus 10 degrees, and it is freezing up. Oh no, poor Earth. Oh, it's all freezing. That's not good. Well, rip humanity, because, look at this, looks like, yeah, the North Pole is connecting um, America, Europe, Asia, and all of that top bit together, and then I'm guessing the South Pole is going to connect with South America, South Africa, Australia, and all that, to make one big supercontinent again, so, look at that, so, is it touching, so it's not touching Africa yet, it's touching, is that touching South America? Yep, that's touching South America, all right. So Antarctica is connected to South America, which is connected to North America, which is connected to the rest of the north of the planet. So, yeah, this is one big continent, as you can see. Look at this. So we've got all that, all that connected, all going all the way down here. So that's pretty crazy. So we speed this up. Yeah, this is going to freeze over even more. So there you go. That polar cap's probably going to get bigger. It's, it's, it's getting colder, slowly but surely, so it's not too extreme, but yeah, that's freezing up. How's Mars doing? Where's Mars? Mars, is that it there? No, that's Earth. Where, where's Mars? Mars, oh, there's Mars. So, minus 194. So, yeah, they, these guys are cold enough. The outer planets, they probably haven't really changed much. Mi one seven, minus 176. So, yeah, the tubes and Saturn are probably cold, and then Uranus and Neptune, they're already very cold. So, yeah, these guys, they're probably not going to face too much difference. It's just the inner solar system mainly. But it looks like Earth just stumbled into a hot temperature there. So, from the way it seems, its orbit is pretty weird. So, it can get close to the pulsar, and then when it goes away again, it gets cold. So, in theory, we may be able to live here, like, with this sort of climate, because... Well, that's that's frozen up. But with it not including the radiation that this thing emits, if this thing was just giving us warmth and nothing else, then we could probably live around it from this distance. But since this guy has, like, heavy, like, radiation and stuff, I believe... Yeah, it probably would, like, uh, make life on or the planet, like, too much... Like, it would just give it too much radiation, I think. Yeah, I, I'm not very smart on the pulsars, but from what I get, they have high magnetic fields and they release a lot of radiation. So, yeah, I believe that would not work for with life on a planet. Unless, unless humanity becomes immune to radiation, which I don't see happening. So, yeah, that's that. So, yeah, but what do you guys think? Like, am I right? Like... I'm pretty sure they emit radiation and stuff, but could we live on Earth around this pulsar like this? Like, because it gets hot and cold, so it's now going into the cold season again, so it goes to 8. So let's get a whole year on Earth, just to see what it looks like. So we'll speed up time as fast as we can go, so so it goes to 10 degrees, and it's slowly going to cool down until it goes all the way around again. So the pulsar's barely moving, it's mostly locked with just Venus, I think. Yeah, that's definitely locked around Venus, so... Right, here's Earth, so... 15 degrees, and it should start to warm up again, I'm hoping, so... Let's keep an out. 17 degrees... Or maybe the years are so weird that the climate can never be the same. It's always com continually different, so... Yeah, that could be weird. So, 20 degrees, is it going to warm up in any way? 22, minus 22... Come on, warm up! Yeah, something tells me we probably wouldn't be able to live here. Even, even without radiation, it's probably too cold. <laughs> yeah, look, look at this! The whole thing is just a, yeah, that that that's that's a big South Pole and that's a big North Pole. Yeah, I I reckon we probably we, we probably couldn't live here. <laughs> yeah, but in theory, if it was warm enough, I reckon we probably still wouldn't be able to live here just because of the radiation. But yeah, I'm pretty sure they emit radiation. Actually, let me just I'm gonna research that actually. So it's a pulsar. So so let me just check this here. 
So it's a highly magnetized rotation neutron star or white dwarf that emits a beam of electromagnetic radiation. So, yeah, these guys do emit radiation, like I said. So something tells me we would definitely not be able to live around this guy. What's its Hattle zone? Does it have one? Let's zoom out here. Yeah, yeah, that that's pretty crazy. So if we're in the red zone here, I'm guessing this red area is just too much radiation. And then the green zone is probably where you're okay. But from that distance, you probably wouldn't even receive any light from it. So, yeah, that's not good. But I, from, from what Google says about it being electromagnetic radiation, I don't know much about radiation types. But, yeah, something tells me that isn't good for the human body. And we definitely wouldn't be able to survive from where Earth is right now in its orbit. So, yeah, that, that that's my conclusion. But I could be wrong. So tell me if I'm wrong. But... Yeah, we, we definitely wouldn't be able to live here, even if it was warm, or warm enough, because now it's minus 50 degrees, so, yeah, we, we, we wouldn't be able to survive there. Because that's as cold as Mars normally is, or, or similar to what Mars normally would be, so, yeah, Mars is at minus 199, so Mars is freezing, like, we, we, we're not living there, but Venus, minus 50, and Mercury is at minus 117, and it's, they, see, the temperatures are continually changing, so... So Venus does warm up when it gets closer, as you can see it's now at 6 degrees, 7 degrees, 10 degrees, and then it's cooling down again, so very, very weird seasons here, so it's pretty crazy, so there's um, good old Venus, but we could we could colonise this, if you guys want another episode where I attempt to colonise all the objects around the, um, the crab pole, so that could be pretty interesting, but yeah, there we go, that is what happens if we just place it and don't press any buttons, but now, let's open it again, then we're going to delete the sun again, so we're going to do that. So we're going to um, yeah, get the pulsar quick, so put the pulsar inside the sun like that. So we'll put it in here, uh, like so, delete the sun. Then we're going to go more and then auto orbit. So now they should all have perfect orbits. So let's see if this makes any difference. So if we hit play, so that's a perfect orbit now, oh my god. <laughs> So let's see if this makes any different on the temperatures of the object. So there we go. The solar system's nice and sorted now. So looks like it's in a binary orbit with Venus still. So that's pretty interesting. So now let's hit play. Let's check what happens to the objects here. So yeah, the or the orbits should all stay the same in theory. Like yeah, nothing should happen. They should all your all the orbits should be completely fine because the, there's no gas giants in the in the solar system. Jupiter and all the other gas giants are all out in their safe zone. Charlico looks a little too close to Uranus's orbit though, so that could be a little bad, but yeah, the inner solar system looks fine, so let's keep an eye on these guys. So Mercury's almost at minus 159, because remember, Mercury has no atmosphere, hardly. Remember, it only has an atmosphere of 10,000 kilograms, so this is pretty much no atmosphere at all. So this guy can't keep heating, so if it's not receiving any heat, the heat is just going to fly off into space, because there's no greenhouse effect on this thing, literally at all. This thing does not trap heat in at all, so yeah, Mercury's freezing cold. Venus, on the other hand, we'll keep an eye on you. So Venus, come on, let me select it. Venus, there you go. So there's Venus. So minus 56, and yeah, this guy's a little cold as well. So there's that. Then Earth, let's go back to you as well. So Earth's already frozen up as well. So similar to last time, minus 40 and getting colder again. I don't know why its temperature just glitched there. That's pretty weird. Mars, minus 200. And then the outer planets will be the same or similar to what they normally are. So... Yeah, even though this thing has got a, temp a surface temperature of 144,000 or 1.4 million or whatever, this could not support the solar system or support the way our planets work. Like, Earth is at minus 12 degrees. It's Every time I click it, it warms up. What if I just turn off climate mode? There we go, that's what should be happening. So, poor old Earth. Minus 70 degrees, wow, that is just, damn. <laughs> damn, this is cold. So yeah, yeah we, we couldn't live here. Minus 130. Yeah, this guy's going out the window in temperature. So Mercury, minus 150. Venus, minus... Three. So Venus is the only one that could be hattable if you um, change its change its settings around a bit. So yeah, there we go. But if you guys want me to attempt to colonise this solar system around the crab pole, so I just say in the comments and I'll do it. So yeah, that is that. So yeah, hopefully you guys all enjoyed this video. Make sure you did hit that like button, subscribe for more. And um, helps on the journey to 1,300 subscribers now because, yeah, that's big number that's cool yeah so many thanks to everyone who watched as well leaves likes comments and all that and yeah there we go so i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye